In this AI video, I'm using ControlNet to reskin this living room to different styles of Indian decor. On the left, you see the input, which is a 3D scan I made using photogrammetry, and on the right, you see the final output. Here are different ControlNet methods. The left uses edge detection, so it does really well with the paintings. The right uses depth, so it does really well with the furniture. As always, the best results are obtained when you combine these techniques together. And in the remainder of this video, I'm gonna walk you through my workflow for creating this video to video experiment. Essentially walking you through all the tools that I used to create this final result. But first, let's talk about the motivation. Why do we need more than text to image or image to image? Well, for starters, text is a pretty fickle way to describe the intricate composition of a scene. The lighting within it, the pose of the object, pose of the characters within that scene, you know, exactly the way they're positioned, the orientation of their limbs, the expression on their faces. Encapsulating all of that into a text description is super, super difficult. It is thus no surprise that artists typically need to go through hundreds of iteration using a bunch of unspecific and sometimes unintuitive prompting techniques to get a satisfactory end result. All this to say that when you're mood boarding, text to image is awesome or image to image is awesome, but what if you have a very specific creative vision in mind? Enter ControlNet. Now, instead of just using text input or image input, you can use things like depth maps full body pose, edge maps, normal maps, to exert control over this chaotic diffusion process. And really when you start putting these things together, magic happens. And that's exactly what I did. First step is creating an input video for video to video. In my case, I ended up using a photogrammetry 3D scan. I screen recorded something, then I created a depth map from it, then you run it through control net and stable diffusion, controlling the chaos, if you will. And finally, we're gonna generate a bunch of keyframes and learn how to interpolate between those things using a tool called Epsynth. That's basically the workflow at a super high level. Now let's go through this one by one. All right, so the first step is defining the input video. This encapsulates the scene layout, the camera animation, the objects within the scene. So a couple years ago, I had made a photogrammetry scan of my parents' living room. I pulled that up essentially in Sketchfab, put a bunch of these points of interest, and when you click on them, uh, the camera quickly lurps to the next point. So essentially I was able to create this like very simple animation of this living room. This gave me exactly what I wanted. I was able to have this like super controlled environment to frame all my shots, and then I just recorded it. As you can see, this is like some super detailed geometry. So that really comes out. At the same time, the texture detail is quite, quite rich. And you can see a lot of detail on the walls over here. So now I have my input video, which encapsulates like the scene that I'm trying to go for in the camera animations. Step two is generating a depth map for this video recording that I made. In my case, I wanted to do something quick and easy. So I just use Midas. What is Midas? Midas is basically an approach for monocular depth estimation. So given a single image, it'll infer a depth map, which basically encodes the distance of every pixel from the camera viewpoint. This is super awesome in our case, because if you look at the depth map of the scene, really a lot of the like contemporary Indian decor look I'm going for is encapsulated in this unique type of furniture. And the depth map does a really good job of pulling that in. So the next step is using control net in concert with stable diffusion 1.5. That's right, SD 1.5. Unlike the SD 2.0 depth model that stability released, control net can let you go back to 1.5, which I know still a lot of artists prefer. Also, it's higher resolution than SD 2.0 and was cheaper to train. Honestly, this paper is absolutely fantastic and I intend to do a deep dive on this in the near future. But for now, let's stick to this video to video workflow. All right, so essentially you can go inside Stable Diffusion and now that you've got, you're conditioning the image generation process using your depth map, you can use text prompts to get some amazing results. So I was able to dial in the look that I was looking for quite easily. Again, the structure of the scene, the composition, the camera framing is all encapsulated in this video, plus the depth map that I'm giving Stable Diffusion. And so here you can see that I can dial in like a more artistic look. This was getting closer to what I actually had in mind, but then I cranked up the lighting to get something far more stylistic. And I absolutely love the result that I get. So I did exactly this for 16 keyframes, dialing in the look that I wanted at different keyframes in this video. So take this 300 frame clip in my case, and I found interesting points I'd like to transition the look. All right, so now I've got 16 keyframes that look kind of like this, and I want to interpolate between them. So to do this, I'm using a tool called Absinthe. 
what is Absynth? Absynth isn't even an AI tool. It uses a classical computer vision, computer graphics technique called non-parametric example-based synthesis. Essentially, this was a visual effects tool designed for rotoscoping artists to define a couple keyframes and then propagate them over the rest of your video. So that's exactly what I did. You're definitely gonna wanna take the output uh, into a video editing tool, After Effects, Premiere, Final Cut, doesn't really matter to blend and composite between those keyframes. And there you have it, that gave you this final result that I am quite, quite happy with indeed. The main takeaway I'll leave you with is you have to mix methods to get the best results, especially with complex scenes. Unsurprisingly, all these different control net methods have their pros and cons, right? Like there's a bunch of different methods that you can use from canny edge to lines, to HED, to actual scribbles, to semantic segmentation, full body pose, etc. So depending on the complexity of your scene, what you're probably gonna wanna do is decompose the various elements and then use these different control net methods in concert. What do I mean by that? So let me give you this example of Canny Edge. So here, Canny does really well with the paintings because it's doing edge detection. So those stay very consistent but it does awful with this table, right? It's like this dimensional structure in the middle and maybe you're not getting as many contrasty edge lines over there on the edge map. On the other hand, with the depth map, as we saw, you can really encapsulate a lot of that furniture. All of those like dimensional objects in the seams super nicely. So I am 100% convinced that if you combined all these things together, you would get a much, much better result. And that will be my next experiment. All right, to close things out, I'm gonna share all my findings from this particular experiment and the next one composing a scene graph into a Substack deep dive on ControlNet. So if that's something you're interested in, be sure to head over to the Creative Technology Digest on Substack and subscribe to get these deep dives direct to your email. This is also my first time making a video like this. Uh, when I put this post up on Twitter, and honestly, I didn't expect it to be that popular, people DM me asking for this breakdown video. So this is something quickly I put together. If you enjoyed this and find this valuable and wanna see more like it, please be sure to like this and let me know in the comments below. That'll help me assess if I should keep making content like this. Usually I just make awesome shorts and share the behind the scenes on Twitter and LinkedIn, but it could be fun to create these like longer deep dives where I decompose this artistic process, this workflow for using all these cool AI tools in concert to make something awesome because that's how you get the best results. And that's what we as creative technologists need to do. Take advantage of the strengths of classical tools, AI tools to make awesome content. So with that, I will see y'all in the next one.